Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Dawn by Green Meadow Games. This is a two to five player board game that takes roughly 45 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Dawn, you are playing to work together to assess a village. You're trying to gather resources to build certain types of townhouses, as well as deal with threats. You're working amongst your other villagers and you're utilizing your resources that are in your hand. However, you might find that a traitor or multiple traitors are in your midst. In fact, Dawn is a game where anybody and everybody could be a traitor. Your objective in the game as a cooperative accomplice is to make sure that you get as many possible points from the major town areas and the great town, the great buildings here as well. At the end of the last round of the game, you're going to tally up all the backsides of all the cards you've scored along with the main cards. And if you have at least 30 points for each player that's still a good guy, then you win. However, if you do not have the required points, so in a two-player a two-player co-op game where it's five players but only two people are co-op, it's 60 points. If you don't have 60 points, maybe you have 58, then it's the traders that can win. But only one will win, and it's the trader that has the most treasure stored up in his vault at the end of the game. That's the basic principle of the game. Have your cards, play them as much as you can, clear your wounds, save the villages, defend yourself against threats, or work against everything, and try to score as many points in your treasury as possible while making the other team lose. That's how Dawn works. I'm going to explain the setup for the game and of course my review. The setup for the game is quite simple. You'll take the main deck and you'll shuffle all the cards and place them within reach of all players. You'll take the town deck and remove any number of cards based on the rules based on the number of players from the game. In this case I'm playing just a three player game so I would take away 15 cards from this deck here, shuffle the rest, and deal out a number based on the rules. In this case it's five. Then give every single player nine cards. Some of them, seven of them are basic cards and two of them are wounds. Each player is going to get a character as well as a card that will help them identify what they can do on their turn as well as each of the symbols on their cards mean. There are four main town buildings or great town buildings. Set them aside for the last round of the game but place them within reach of all players as well as a wound deck. All the rest of the stuff you will not need except for the first player token, which you can give to anybody, doesn't really matter. The rest of the stuff can be set aside for later, especially in the objectives, which I'll explain at the end of my review. Then, go ahead and choose that player, take their cards in their hand, and begin. Let's talk about how to play. The game comes with a turn order card, which explains what you do on your turn and the, basically the entire round, as well as player types and how many points you need to win based on the number of players playing. So in a turn, players are going to have their nine cards. Seven of them, of them are going to be the different types of action cards, whether they be a gold symbol, which is a wild. They could be a blue symbol, which is a spy card. They could be a green symbol, the little plus sign, which is a health card. Or they can be red, which is an attack card. The other two cards fill up spaces. These are called wound cards. They reduce your total hand size. So you could have a max hand size of nine if you can get rid of these wounds. Attack cards are going to let you secretly look at two cards on a great building and then you can go ahead and choose to discard one of them if you would like. Each of these main four cards are the great building cards and they're gonna have piles of cards underneath them as players play them on them on their turn. Heal cards. You can discard three heal cards from your hand to heal yourself from a wound. Basically removing a wound card from your hand which means that the next time you draw instead of leaving this card in your hand you'll be able to replace it with a brand new real card. You can also spy. You can discard one of these cards here and look at the back of one of these cards here, whether it be a town card or whether it be one of these like obstacle cards. This will denote how many points you can get from successfully capturing or controlling a town or whether it be that you're able to defeat an uh, adversary that could cause harm on you. And the last thing is these coins. These coins are wild cards. You can add them to do anything. You could use them to attack, to spy or add them with a green card in order to heal yourself. So two coins and a green card is the same thing as three green cards or three yellow cards, three coin cards is the same as three green cards as well. So on your turn, the first thing that happens or in general, every player is gonna draw until they have nine cards, which you start with at the beginning of the game. Then everyone is gonna take one of their cards that isn't a wound card and put it inside their, their storehouse. This is a space where they store cards in, from their hand into play. You're always gonna have put, be putting in one. So on round one, it'll be one card, then two, it'll be two cards, and three, it'll be three cards. In your storehouse, if you wanna be a bad guy, you put positive treasure icons in here. If you wanna be a good guy, you put negatives. That's the general rule of thumb. But remember, throughout your turn, you can switch and swap these cards. But just before you start playing, place one just like that face down. 
Then the first player goes, which will be me, and I can play all of the cards that I want in my hand. And I'll be able to do whatever I want. Uh, the first main thing I can do is I can store cards. I can take a card, any card I want, and put it on any of the open buildings or any of the open obstacles. I can place them face down, like this. I can store one or two or three, it really doesn't matter, as I place them down. I could also store these cards on the great buildings. And I can do the same thing, storing them face down, any number of my cards, uh, hopefully achieving some type of goal. Next thing I could do is simply play the cards. I could spy, which like I said, allows me to take a peek. I could use a gold to do anything that I want. I could use health in quantities of three to heal myself from wound cards, or I can attack mainly the great buildings, only the great buildings, by looking at two cards that other people have placed and hopefully getting rid of one that might not be suited for the purpose. Why am I playing cards? Well, because each of these obstacles and these structures require things. For instance, the houses are gonna require a certain number of treasure chests, and on your cards, there's gonna be treasure chests and there's gonna be the symbol, which you can use either or. If you're using a card for its treasure chest symbol, that's what matters when it comes to these specific types of buildings you can make. It won't matter about the gold coin or anything like that. There are some great buildings that do change that though. So for instance, if this building has 12 treasure chests and I place two negative treasure chests, now it will need 14. That's what a trader would do. Or if I placed three treasure chests on this building here, it would go from 12 to nine, which means that cooperatively, we can work together to put nine value of treasure chests on this card that will allow us as a team to take this as a building for end game scoring. Um, and so on and so forth. And each of your hands, and in your, each of your hands, you'll have different cards with different treasure chest values. And these cards are all gonna give a different point value as well. You could put four, 12 treasures on this one and get four points, or you could put 11 points of treasure on this card, which will give you 10 points. So looking at the cards of the spy is very useful. After you've played all your cards on your turn, everybody's going to do the same thing, dumping their entire hand in different areas of the game board for various reasons and then they're going to empty, and the next player, the next player, the next player. And then the buildings are going to resolve, and then the threats will resolve. Uh, each of the buildings will check. Does this card have anything underneath it? No, it just gets discarded. Uh, does this card? It does. And does this card? It doesn't, so it will get discarded. Then you'll look at the building's cards, and everybody that put cards underneath it, you'll shuffle these cards, make sure you don't know who put, put one in, and you will flip them. You'll go, okay, two negatives, so it goes from 11 to 13, then to three positives, which goes from 13 to 10, Negative two is then negative 12. That's nothing, that's three. It goes, to negative, uh, it goes to negative eight. Negative eight is not a positive, it's not zero, which is what you need to have. It needs to be either negative, uh, zero or a positive number, in which case you would lose this as well. But let's just say that it was positive. You'd actually keep this card and set it for end game scoring. If not, it'll just go to the discard pile like the rest and all these cards will get discarded. Then the threats, you'll reveal from left to right. Nothing happens destroy the lowest cost building that you have. So there are certain threats you'll want to deal with. Some of them have actually effects and some of them don't. So spying on them is important. And instead of dealing with them as treasure chests, you're actually gonna be placing things like these, uh, these swords here. Three swords to defeat this one here, three swords for this one here. There are various different types of obstacles you'll have to deal with, with different types of values you'll need to remove them. So these are just simply three cards each with the sword. Now, there are coins that you can use. Like I said, coins kind of wild for not only their actions, but also for their symbol. So you could put this here, and that would be one away, or one subtracted from the needed number of the obstacles. However, for each obstacle you successfully defeat, it gets discarded without looking at it. And for each one that you do not successfully defeat, you'll reveal them and do what they say. Sometimes they will make us have additional wounds that go to our hands. Sometimes they make us lose buildings that we would have otherwise successfully gained. And sometimes they do nothing. Then the first marker is going to get passed to the next player. Everyone will then draw seven cards and then you're going to reveal a number of cards from this town deck and place them back onto the field to which the round will start once again and players will dump their cards down onto the field. After a number of rounds, the last one, there's no more cards left in this deck here, then you're going to go ahead and do one more round, which will involve just the great buildings. And everybody can place cards into these guys here. And each of them have a number of requirements on them. Like this one here requires you to place 10 spy cards on it to build. However, you'll remove a spy card from the stack that's being built here for every single coin or health marker that's under here as well. Uh, this one is 18 different treasure chests. This one is gold 
gold cards and this one here is health cards and some of them have other ways you can reduce the quality of value from these cards here and they give you points these are the only ones that are face up based on the requirements here. If you would meet the requirements, this one will give you 30 points. This will give you four points for every building that you've built throughout the game. This is 20. And then this one over here is 10 points per ally that has no wounds. So like I said, you can get rid of wounds by paying those, th those three health cards to get rid of one. And if you get rid of another, that'll allow you to open up your hand, but you can also gain value from this specific great building as well. And then after that, the game is going to be over. Everybody's going to have a number of cards in their stack here, and you'll check to see, does anybody turn into a traitor? Do they have those seven uh, treasure chests that they stole? And if the answer is yes, then you'll deduct 30 from the requirement in order to win the game as a cooperative. If everybody is a good guy, though, you're going to add 30 points for every player that is in the game and is a good guy. It tells you here, ally victory. It's total prosperity required. One player is 30 points, two is 60, three is 90, so on and so forth. If the allies fail, the scoundrel with the most treasure chests in their pool is going to be the winner at the end of the game. Then the last thing to note is if you successfully accomplished any goals in the game, such as opening open whenever a player has won the game as a scoundrel three times, which you can mark off or maybe open when you've built the oracle three times and you can mark these down you'll take these cards and you can add them to the town deck and thusly you'll have new cards that you can utilize or tiles throughout the game that's basically how you play the game dawn by green meadow games let's talk about my review so dawn is one of the first games i've actually seen where you can choose to work as or work against the trader you can have multiple traders in the game and in fact everyone can be a trader the rule of thumb is that you need to actually get a certain number of treasures in your pool so on your turn you're basically going to take a card put it down play your cards draw your hand take a card put it down play your cards and draw your hand and you'll keep doing that every round up until the point where you have I think there's six or so, I think it's six rounds in the game and you'll have six cards that are here and you'll check to see okay do I have uh, enough treasures to be a trader and you get to decide that because remember in the game you can switch and swap these out so if you have three cards face down on the third round and it's the fourth round now and you draw your hand and you place a card down you can go I want these three now and I want to put these ones down here and you can change your variation you can become a bad guy if you want if you think the game is going sideways and you don't think you guys are going to win you can go for that as well but then you're definitely setting up more for failure and maybe maybe somebody else has been the trader the whole time in which case it's going to be even more difficult for you to win because there are a ton of negatives in your treasury but it's one of those games that kind of decides to say hey if you want to be this way, be this way. If you want to be that way, be that way. It starts off where you're supposed to want to work cooperatively, but every single time something fails by one or two points, you, you think you have seven treasures here, but there's actually only, uh, I think you have eight here, but there's actually only seven, and you start feeling a sense of unease. Is there a traitor amongst us? Are we actually all working together, or is there one person, or maybe even two, that are vying to defeat us and win the game all on their own? And you'll only see that at the end of the game. Uh, now, like I said, this game is... I believe it's up to five players. Uh, yeah, two to five players. And so with more players, this game is going to be better, uh, at least in my opinion. I, I love the idea of having more players to be social with, determining who's going to play where and how much. And you can set your own house rules for like, you can only use the words low, high, or medium. You can't actually use, uh, I put three value here or four value here. With more players, it matters less, but with less players, it definitely matters. And I think you should be kind of quiet when it comes to what, what you're placing where. Just, I'm putting these cards here to help out. But if you want, you can kind of jimmy the rules a bit to make it more fun for whatever your game group is going to be like. I also like these great hall cards. These are things that you know exist. You see that people are contributing to them. And it gives you a sense of who's actually actively contributing, who is playing too many of their action cards as action and not as value. And you start to get a feel of what the game is going to be like, what the players playing your game are going to want to do, what their objectives are. And you'll have to set your sights based on that. If everybody else is a traitor, maybe it's better for you as a good guy to simply complete just this card here. It's worth 30 points. And if you can get this card done, you're going to win because everybody else is going to not, is not going to be counted in the victory scoring. So they might have been messing around and frolicking with all this other stuff and making failures happen everywhere, but they missed out on this card here. Or maybe just these two cards, they weren't paying as much of attention. You dumped the alt the right amount in order to counteract their villainy, and thusly you can win just like that as one player on the co-op side, which everyone should be working as on the co-op side. But 
There's these people that like to go against the grain and like kind of mix things up. And then you can actually be the mixer-upper as a cooperative player. Yes, very, very cool. The fact that they added in these extra little cards here that you can kind of keep track of and decide like, okay, did you complete this? Yes, yes. And as, as you complete these little goals, you'll add a little bit more content to the game. That's, that's awesome as well. The game is a nice setup and actually most of the rules that you can learn about and understand how the references are, which is like, okay, these are the type of bad guys that there are in the game and what likely is going to be underneath them. And the types of buildings and their different values, their turn order, how many victory points are needed based on the number of players playing what faction, and finally the cards and what you need in order to do them. Otherwise the game's really simple though. You're just drawing cards, putting a card down into your like safe area, and then playing the rest out and trying to complete whatever goal it is that you're trying to complete. And going around the table with allowing the first player marker to move, which actually works really well and I really like about this game. I love the variety, I love that each of the cards might have the same value but have different points underneath them. And you're only going to find out by looking at cards, but spending cards in certain ways can make people think unfavorably about you. But even when you're actually trying to do the right thing, or whenever somebody forgets that somebody else did an action and they do the same action, wasting a card, and then the entire game people start to think that they're evil when they may actually not be. Or maybe they use it as a cover and say, well, no, I actually, I am evil, but I'm actually going to pretend to be not so evil. And yeah, it just has a lot of variety and a lot of coolness to this game. And the value of points is not super high to where one player can't win outright on either end or two players or if everyone wants to work together as a cooperative game which is what we did our first time surprisingly uh you can win that way as well even with a huge number of points you need because as long as people don't go it, it, it's like this like wonky system where sometimes it can be at your disadvantage to be the one bad guy trying to screw things over and not doing enough to where your opponents are succeeding enough to where you just end up losing and they have to weigh all these costs and elements Artwork for the game is very nice. I like it. I think it works very well. It's got this kind of like old timey English feel like a farming type thing going on with evil treacherous villains and and like sinkholes and whatnot and it just works really well. The quality of the cards is excellent. They're nice thick high quality cards that will last a long time and I just really really enjoy it. The only thing I kind of wish is that these these other cards these great hall cards I wish that they were full art cards and they did less of the text here um, and made it more about symbols because I really enjoy the art for this game and I like to show it pronounced and I wouldn't also mind if they have a deluxe version of the game maybe they have a play mat for the game that would be cool as well but otherwise this was a truly enjoyable game. I love the idea of an added trader that you can choose to have or not have and I like the fact that you can use cards in different ways and it kind of takes little samplings of things like Battlestar Galactica and those other type of trader games and it inc incorporates its own feel, its own theme and the ability for you to make the choice that you want to make and not just to be random, which is great. So Dawn, a solid successful game, but it's probably not going to be up for everybody because it has that trader element to it. There are a paranoia, you're wondering if people are lying and some people don't like that type of a game, but as far as how the game plays and how smoothly it works and simply it works, in the worst case scenario, you're not having a good at time of it, but it still plays smooth and easy to, and flows well. I don't think anybody's really going to be upset in playing this game. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this one, and it's one I'm going to be keeping in my collection for sure because I love Trader Games. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dawn. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check our website on filtergamer.com. Blog posts and giveaways currently up, the Labyrinth Adventure giveaways on our website, as well as reviews and all other kinds of good stuff there. Look, Kickstarter list. You can also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6 30 p.m. PST where you'll see us play games just like this one here, which I think will be good for a five player game on a live stream and on whatnot every Wednesday at 630 as well. We sell games and show off games and talk about games there too. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to the dawn of a new age with you next time.